Folding phones are the future of phones. That is a statement mm -hmm. I have made before and I still stick by it. I've been using the Galaxy Fold 5 now since back in October. I've mm -hmm. tried switching to the S24 Ultra. I tried switching to the Pixel 8a. And even though those phones still work really great, I still come back to the Fold 5 because I think it's one of the best phones out there. And I still think that it is going to be the phone of the future for a lot of different people. It just has so many use cases that I think a lot of people can benefit from it. And I know I'm not the only person that thinks this because ever since Samsung has launched folding phones, slowly the market has shifted a little bit more companies have joined in. And recently, a couple more companies have launched here in the US coming from Google, coming from OnePlus competitors directly to the folding phone. Now, I know there's been other folding phones outside of the US, but in the US market, it's now kind of being introduced as a main category or at least as a side category, which I do think will add at some point become the main category. Now, ever since the early 2000s, we've come a long way from phones. I remember back in middle school, back in like the early 2010, I remember seeing a lot of these phones out there that can do a lot. That's when we barely started seeing kind of the internet on the phones. People were kind of all over Blackberries. People were using them to email, which was a really cool feature. Sometimes opening a web page would take time, but it was working. And then finally now in 2024, we have phones that are really really good the computers and the chips inside of them do a lot more than just writing an email but people still are using them for the same exact things that we were using them for back then you use them to call you use them to text now you just use them to go through social media instead of going through your emails you still do your emails and a lot a lot of content consumption through youtube through netflix it's basically now a content consumption machine which back then is what your computer used to be and folding phones don't necessarily do anything different than your regular kind of standard rectangle phone does but the thing that the folding phone adds is a bigger screen and whenever it comes to using it in tablet mode i think that everyone that uses their phone to watch netflix people that use it to watch YouTube, to watch Hulu, all of that content is better experience on a folding tablet phone. Now you have an iPad mini basically because the size of the Fold 5 is basically the same screen size. It basically works the same. You have the S Pen, which also is similar to the Apple Pencil. And if you really think about it, a lot of households now do have a side tablet that they use more for content when they're home. They can use it for the bigger screen, the better text. Sometimes parents use it because you can make bigger bigger text and still be able to see your apps just fine. You can use it to browse the web, to go through social media. That's basically what the Fold offers if you use it in open mode. And then whenever you do want to leave the house, you can fold it closed. And now you have your regular cell phone that you can use. You can pick up where you left off. All of your apps will be saved. They all work just the same in closed mode as they did whenever you had it open. So in a way now you actually have two different phones. You have a phone that's a tablet and you have a phone that's a regular phone. And if you think about it, Samsung and all these other companies definitely priced it that way. This phone costs a pretty penny. It comes in at $1,800 for the Fold 5. I believe the OnePlus is priced similarly. And then the Google Pixel Fold also costs similarly around that $17 to $1,800 range. But if you are someone that wants to wait or you can wait, I do recommend that you wait a couple months after launch. You can actually get them for less than $1,000, which by then it comes at the same price as some of these other Pro, Ultra, Pro Max, all of these other Plus models that cost around that same price range as well when they're brand new. And the Fold 5, I do use it mainly in open mode whenever I am home so I can multitask. I actually can use YouTube picture in picture, which whenever I do use picture in picture, it's actually a very decent window size. I would actually even say that it's about the same size as a regular 15 Pro iPhone 15 Pro whenever I'm watching it in the portrait mode. So because of that, I can have a little window with my YouTube video still playing. At the same time, I can answer emails. I can go through your guys' comments on YouTube Studio, answer your guys just comments or just simply browse through reddit while at the same time listening to a youtube video you can also multitask by having two different windows open and then it's like having two folding phones closed because the window splits it right down the middle you can have one on the left and one on the right I personally don't use that as much just because, again, the main things I do is watch YouTube and then I'll go through my emails. I'll answer comments. I'll add calendar events, things like that. Simple, small things. And my brain cannot multitask to that efficiency. So I definitely don't need a whole screen for YouTube. The picture in picture works just fine. I kind of listen to it in podcast mode where I can just be listening to it in the background. 
while at the same time completing other tasks. Now, I myself haven't really used the S Pen since I got the phone. I did get it alongside the phone, but I haven't really used it. I've actually been telling myself that this year with all of the release and as I kind of dive deeper into folding phones, that I am going to start using the S Pen alongside it. I wanted to start kind of taking up drawing and that's something that I really used to like. But if you have other suggestions on how I can use the S Pen, leave it down below. Similar to the S24 Ultra, I really wanted to get into it, but the S24 Ultra Pen is a little bit smaller this one's a little bit larger so it feels a little bit more like a pencil so make sure you leave your recommendations down in the comments of what else i can take up with the s pen but if you're someone that didn't purchase the s pen with your fold 5 or maybe styluses just aren't for you you can also take advantage of the other samsung feature samsung dex which allows you to use your phone as a desktop computer now, I personally would not recommend that you use this as a pro editing machine, especially for video. If you have really heavy footage, it might not work that great. Although maybe it will. I've seen people use phones to kind of edit some heavy footage. I just don't think it's going to be the best experience. And if you're a pro, you probably already have other tools for that, but you can definitely use it for just simple web browsing. You can use it to watch content on an even larger screen. If you want to hook it up to your TV and use that to watch Netflix instead of using your phone. That's always a great use case. I've seen friends and family who had that desktop computer for their parents who just would go on there to kind of print documents, maybe sign some emails or respond to some emails because they like using a keyboard instead. So with that, you can even use a Samsung desk for that as well. So you don't even need to purchase a separate computer tower or a separate all in one. The Galaxy device will do all that for you. Just make sure you get them a USB-C dock so they can hook up the monitor, power the device, and then with a simple one cable, you can have all of that connected. And if you are a creative and you have a really color accurate monitor, you can even use Samsung Dex to edit some of your photos. I know the app version of some of the Adobe suite is a little bit less expensive than going with the full desktop suite. So you can go that route as well. Photo editing should be a little bit easier than kind of editing 8K or 4K 60 frames per second video. So for that, I do think that Samsung Dex still works just as great. And all of those apps work well on a monitor as well. And then to add to that, whenever you're using your phone in tablet or just in regular mode, I do like that Samsung with the One UI has added a lot more customizability than you would get on the Pixel phones, which has stock Android. With Samsung and One UI, you can just download the Good Lock app. And within Good Lock, there's actually plenty any of other attachments that you can add and you can edit the home screen you can edit your icons you can edit the themes the wallpaper you can really add a whole bunch of things to the phone through an app that's actually first party to samsung rather than having to go the whole nova launcher route and having to download all the other icons and all the i think it's like kgwt for all of your background widgets which i still think that's a great option for a lot of people but when we're talking about customizability especially for people that aren't as tech savvy and people that don't really want to go into rooting and all these other apk files and downloading stuff off of the web that might be a little much for the general public so i do think that having these first party apps where you can just download it and it does only one thing register only does one thing uh, the theme park only does one single thing i think that's better for the general public and it'll make a lot of people buy into having an android that's more customizable and alongside all of those customizability options for your home screen and kind of everything throughout the phone you also now get Galaxy AI features on some of the previous phone lines. Gwen UI now with an update has brought that down to the Galaxy Fold 5, to the S23 Ultra. Samsung has really stepped up their AI features, especially on the Fold 5. I feel like a lot of different people are using Circle to Search. That's a very easy feature to use, a very simple one as well, but it's so good at searching exactly what you want to look for, whether you saw it on an Instagram post, you saw it on a web or a YouTube video, and it's something that you're interested in, but the creator doesn't mention it. And I do think that all of these AI features that are on the Samsung phones, on the Google phones and the partnership between Google and Samsung, I do think that that's helping a lot of people see what Android is offering and really pushing Apple to also offer that as well. And I think that that's going to make even Apple better. Hopefully at some point they also offer all of these AI features. I know WWDC is coming up in June, so maybe we'll see some AI on the iOS end as well. But even though these features are all great for the Fold 5, there are a couple things that I do think 
things need to be switched or changed in the next iteration to make this phone better and also to make more people buy into the Galaxy folding line. And the first one is going to be the price. Now, the price again comes in at $1,800 for a brand new phone. I think this is way too high, especially for the general public. People are purchasing phones that are a thousand. They already feel like that's a lot. So seeing something that costs $1,800, it's a folding phone. It's probably not as reliable as your regular rectangle. If you drop it and you drop it on the hinge and it cracks the whole screen, that's a whole different issue. So I think bringing down the price to something that's kind of more palatable, something that people are willing to buy into. Even one commenter mentioned something like having an ultra line that costs the $1,800, $2,000 and then having a regular line that costs a little bit less. I think that's going to be a great option or a great addition because then you can have the intro level folding phone and then you have the super ultra pro max phone that has all of the features. And then aside from that, if you're going to make an ultra phone or if you're even going to be charging 1800, I definitely think you need to fix the battery life and I think you need to fix the cameras as well. Now, the cameras aren't the worst. Like if you go out and you have really good sunlight, I think they work really great. But whenever you're indoors, they do tend to be a little bit darker. Even the Google Pixel 8a, I know that's one of the better cameras out there. But even indoors with the low light, they perform a little bit better just because it makes it a little bit brighter. Samsung is still doing a thing where it makes it really saturated. But for a phone that costs $1,800, I just feel like they can do better with the cameras overall. And as for the battery life, whenever I am using it in tablet mode, especially when I am home, I sometimes don't even make it through the day. Whenever it's like 9 or 8 p.m., I do have to charge it up because it's already less than 10 percent. And that to me is really bothersome for a phone that costs $1,800. Now I know there's a lot of things that have to go into it. It's actually really thin, but at the same time, now you have two different screens to work with. So the battery life does lack a little bit and it does suffer a little bit. And I'm always using it in max brightness. But again, for the general public, everyone's going to be using it the same way I use it, especially if you're marketing it to be a content watching machine. A lot of people are going to be watching Netflix for hours nonstop. So I definitely think the battery life could be a little bit better just so people can watch their shows. They can watch their content and not really have to worry about having to connect it to the wall. And then the last thing they need to fix is having a slightly wider front screen. Now, again, I mentioned it earlier that competition is good for folding phones right now because it's a very early market and seeing that the Pixel actually has a way wider screen, kind of more passport like and the one plus folding phone also has a wider screen than the fold has really driven Samsung to hopefully widen the screen just a little bit. Some of the early renders, some of the early kind of leaks show that it might be a little bit wider. So I think that's a great option for Samsung if they go that route. And that for us as a consumer is helping us win because the Fold 5, even though it's usable, it's definitely very narrow. But I'm interested to know what your guys' thoughts are. What is the one feature or the one change that folding phones need to make to get you to buy a folding phone as your next upgrade? Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you guys for watching. Click here to watch another one of my videos, and I will catch you guys in the next one.